go ahead and uh, go back into Maya. I'll hide our references here. I'll minimize that. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, assign a new material. And we're going to go ahead and pick a blend. So that blend will uh, have some specularity to it. And one of the things uh, I'd like to do after I assign a texture is I want to, or a material, I want to uh, make a connection to some sort of texture map. And in our case, um, since we haven't actually looked at any of our UVing work from the lens of what the texture is going to actually look like, go ahead and look at something um, here if you if you select over to the right of the color option, you can bring up this other render node panel and you're going to choose a file. So that's a 2D uh, file that you're going to map to the shader. And you see how the shader now uh, changed to uh, black. Uh, well, that's because we haven't actually chose a file. So if we go in and uh, pick from image name, you can grab this file. And I'm going to pick UV texture checker, uh, something that I have saved here that's a big multi-color square, big file, uh, 2048 by 2048 square texture. And I will go ahead and apply that. And you see nothing happened. Well, that's because we do not have the uh, texture uh, view selected. But now when we do change to texture view, you can see uh, what what happened here? You can see that our new texture is applied to the car, and every every component now has this uh, file texture on it. So if we bring up our UV editor and we select. I'll just grab the group node. You can see if I go to image display. Uh, Oh, why isn't that not working? There we go. All right, let's display image, and then I usually select dim image so that I can really see the UVs. But you can see, um, not 100. What, what our goal? Our goal is to get these uh, uh, boxes, these checkers, checkerboards, about uh, evenly spaced and also proportionately sized. And you can see like. Down here, uh, we're not, things are a little, a little squeezed. And this is on the, on the hood roof portion here. So if I go in and I maybe scale it out a little bit, the tiles look a little more square and even. And that looks pretty good. Maybe the ones on the border, you could go to the shell border, kind of correct some of that stretchiness there. And uh, the more time you spend doing this and getting your model, your UVs, I should say, nice and evenly spaced, the better your experience is going to be when you go to actually apply uh, your own texture. So looks like something funny go funky going on here. Um, there's tools, again, you could use, like I could grab all these uh, UVs here and go to my optimize UV tool. And it actually works pretty well. You see the update on the right, I mean on, on, on the left. 
and the 3D model itself is looking a lot more even. So what you could do is just continue adding to the selection and touching it up with this tool. Again, we're in the uh, optimize UVs brush. There we go. Looks like we had too much space on that final edge and that picks it up and fixes it for us. Another thing that I should mention about the optimize UV tool is that um, if your UVs are flipped, meaning um, that this side is uh, has gone. So if I grab these faces right here, you see that the letters are facing the wrong way, the numbers and letters. Well, if I go in and I try to optimize that with the tool, it goes bananas. But that it can be dealt with if you invert them the right way. So if I turn on shade UVs and I turn off the image, and you can see that some of the UVs are red, that means those are flipped. So you can handle that by using the uh, flip in the U direction, which is uh, horizontal. So now if I go to the shell and I use my optimize tool, you can see that it no longer freaks out and it kind of knows what what it needs to do because of the uh, fact that it's it's no longer flipped incorrectly so if you choose to use that tool uh, just keep that in mind all right, so we say that we've got everything laid out like we like and that we have our you know, UVs secured and nothing is flipped uh, incorrectly and we're ready to move on to the next stage. We can go ahead and shoot out a, it's called a UV snapshot. So under the UV editor window, polygons, UV snapshot, I'm going to go ahead and uh, change the location to my Maya, Car Potter, what I'm working on here. And I'm going to use the images folder. I'm going to just call this UVs. And that's not the final step. We actually have to go ahead and uh, click OK. And then what you see down here in my status line is that I've created a PNG file with those saved values to my directory of my project. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, wrap this video tutorial up. And in the next video, we will actually open the file that we just created in Photoshop, and we will start busting out our texture and our base colors for our car model. So um, that's what we're gonna do. I'll see you in the next one.